Okay, hey guys. Uh, so right now I'm just going to talk a little bit about the, no, excuse me, about the Shepherd of Fire solo. Um, I'm not actually going to really play along with it. Like I said, I'm having such a mission trying to uh, be able to like have a song playing at the same time as I'm playing without like the mic just going insane. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about some of the concepts, the scales, uh, and what's going on. Um, there are a couple parts that I. Uh, of, the, of the song that I know, of the solo that I know how to play off by heart, so I'm going to show you those. But otherwise, I'm just very general stuff. Um, I'm very much more into like improvising solos and stuff rather than actually like learning them note for note. So that's what we're going to do. Okay. Um, so like the rest of the song, we're playing in uh, D minor, uh, but D harmonic minus, like trading between the two, um, with a lot of emphasis on the. Um, on the natural 7 note. Uh, that's the note that really kind of defines, that makes the harmonic minor sound like the harmonic minor. So. so that note uh, gets a lot of attention. So. Uh, okay, so I'm going to do the first little bit of the song. I'm going to show you how to play it. Um, it's not too bad, it's, it's quite speedy, but you can kind of, uh, you can do hammer-ons and pull-offs and stuff to make up for that, or you can play all the notes if you can, but like I said, it's quite fast. Uh, okay, so we're starting off on the fifth, the fifth fret of the E string, uh, and you're just bending that up and down twice. That's kind of intro to the solo, and then playing 15, 13, and then on the second string, 15, 13, 15. So what you have is you can look after that if you want, or you can pick any note. It doesn't make much of a difference. Um, okay, so using your uh, your third and your first fingers, you can use your second and your first if you want. I have more comfortable using my first, my third. Um, okay, then it goes into a little bit of a super shred kind of thing, it's really quick. Uh, so starting with your second finger on the 15th fret of the second string, and then on the on the E string, the first string, you're playing uh, 13, 13, uh, sorry, so it's 15 on the second, 13 on the first, 17, 13, 17, 13. So you get that effect. All you do this with this is uh, where the the seventeenth note on the set the seventeenth fret you move that down one fret each time so you get um, I would try and play it like the proper speed but it's quite difficult. Um, okay, so there you have you have 15, 13, 17, 13, 17, 13, 15, 13. 16, 13, 16, 13, 15, 13, 15, 13, 15, 13, 15, 15. So, from the beginning. Ah, oh, sorry, don't, you don't go back to the 15 on the second string uh, at the end. Okay, then what you do is you shift down now, the 11th, 11th fret on the second string. Uh, and now it's it's not exactly the same riff. Um, the previous riff, sorry, where we're playing there. That's um, I think it's uh, 16th note triplets. It's really quick. Um, and now we go we shift down. It slows down. It doesn't sound like it slows down. It slows down really slightly to it's like uh, fifthlets or I don't know, I don't know what you call them, but it's five notes in the same space as uh, four sixteenth notes when you play eleven. Uh, and now instead of going like you had here, you had 13, 17, 13, 17, now you go uh, 13, 10, 13, 10, 13, 10, now, yeah, so it's 11, 13, 10, 13, 10. And then uh, 11 and 12, 10, 12, 10. And then to finish that a little bit off, you go 11, 10, 9, so, put that all 
here, just kind of slow. That note, um, it's not really part of the, the scale. Uh, oh, sorry, it's actually it's it's the blues note, so it's your flat five, so it fits in it fits in quite well. Bit of a funny note to hang on, it gives like a lot of tension and stuff, but you know that's metal. Blech. Okay, um, sorry, that was, I failed at that so badly. Sorry. Um, okay, so that's like the intro. Uh, then we have a little bit of bending. So you hang on the on the nine. You know what to do? It's thirteen on the second string. Bend up. Uh, okay, so you bend up and down. Then play ten. Uh, okay, so you bend up, down, play ten, then you can slide back to seven or six. I'm not really sure which one. It doesn't really matter because you play so so quickly that if you hang on, if you hang on a bad note when you're playing quickly. Kind of um, but anyway, what you want to do is eventually is get to eight. Doesn't matter really how you do that. Bend up. So once you got to eight, you bend up. You play back. Play six. Slide up to 16 on the second string and bend it up as well. So what you have is something like, something like this. Like I said, it's just a kind of a general guideline. Bending on 16. Uh, sorry. Okay, so you get to 16, you bend it up and down. Play 13 on the second string and then you, you bend 15 on the first string. So then that whole riff would sound like this. Like I said, it's playing so quickly that if you have some, if you sneaking some bum notes in there, here and there, not the end of the world, doesn't really make much of a difference. Okay, and you're bending up 15 a couple times, giving some vibrato. Um, okay, so from the beginning, that would kind of sound something like this. Uh, so. Kind of like that. Um, and what you're doing is you're going on the second string, you're going to the 18th fret. 18. And what you're doing for this whole next section, you're kind of playing uh, 16th note triplets. For everything. So I'm not really going to tell you how many notes to play. I'm just going to tell you which notes to play, and it's 16th note triplets. So it's 18, 15, 17, 18, 13, 9. 13, 6, 8, uh, just joking. Okay, so when you get to 8, after you play the trips on 60, on, on 6, you hang there and then you slide up to 9 and get to that flat 5 blues note of the D minor. Very cool note. You can give it a pinch on my or something pretty really cool. Uh, so you have. You have to play it quite fast to get the rhythm. Uh, something like that. Uh, okay, this is where I got when I was trying to listen and figure out the song where it kind of all fell down a hole because I just, for the life of me, could not figure out what was going on. I think I might have got it, but it's like so super fast and even slowing it down and trying to listen to it, I just can't really figure it out. Um, so from here on, it's kind of going to get a lot more improvisational. You can, I'll show you what scales to use. Um, and for the most part, you can kind of just mess around. You can play fast, you can play slow, anything that sounds cool to you. Um, you know, I think improv is a great way to just learn more about the instrument and how to play. Um, and you know, a guitarist who can improvise is killer. It's way better than some guy who can play like a song really fast, but can't do his own stuff really fast. 
you know. Um, okay, so here's what I think is happening. If you know what's happening, tell me. I've checked out some tabs. They weren't great. I couldn't. It didn't really sound like what was happening to me. Um, it sounds to me like it's uh, a D minor arpeggio. Something like that. Uh, so the sweeping is really bad at the moment. I haven't, I haven't like, focused on it for a long time. So it's something like that. And then, um, what I what I prefer to do though, which I find a lot easier than sweeping. If you can sweep and you can pull off a really quick five string D minor or minor pattern sweep, then try it. It's really, it sounds cool when you can get it really quick. But I can't mode. But what I would what I would recommend um, is just playing around with the scale I'm gonna show you now. Um, okay, so this is It's a D minor scale. This is just the normal minor. You can throw in uh, this note here, the ninth on the first string, and the ninth on the second string. If you want, those are like auxiliary notes. The ninth on the first string kind of makes it sound more like a harmonic minor, and the ninth on the second string is the, the flat five, the blues note, uh, which gives it also quite a metal kind of feel. So the scale we're going to be playing is, I'm just going to run you through it, starting fifth string. sounds like a major scale that's because it is it's an F major scale F major and D minor F A, yeah F major and D minor are essentially the same thing um, it's all about where you start you know so if you start from a D it sounds like a D if you start from your F it sounds like an F major scale that you can play around with. If you know your scale patterns well, then any D minor, any D minor works. Um, I just prefer, I like playing in this kind of region when you solo, it gives you, you know, you have some, you can get to the D minors. Okay, so here when Gates is playing that super fast, what sounds like a, uh, an arpeggio to me, I would just play something like uh, maybe starting on the ninth fret of the third string. And then you can just kind of fool around with this. For like a ball, so. Make sure you're getting back to the the, the, the natural seven, the harmonic minor notes on the ninth of the first. Um, if you know when you when you're trying to copy a solo, if you can, if like during the really fast parts you mess around and you get back to the same note that they land on, it's gonna sound great. If you because you know he's hanging on a note and you're hanging on a different note or something, it's gonna sound a bit messed up. But if you can get to the the same note that he does and hang on it, then. It's gonna sound like you know what you're doing, which is exactly what you want. But to sound like you know what you're doing when you don't actually know what you're doing, that's that's the way. Um, okay, no, no, just kidding. So anyway, you hang on the knife. Um, then a little bit more, he does like a, a run up the scale. Uh, so you can do maybe starting on the 12th fret on the D, the 12th fret of the fourth string, and just 
run up the scale until you get to the 12th fret of the 3rd string, that's your E note. And you bend that up, down, 10 on the E, 13 on the E, bend up, back to 10, and then there's a little riff which goes 17, 12, 10, 9. So all in all, what you have there can be something like uh, Sorry, that's not right. Uh, okay, sorry, I think it's, uh, it's instead of 17, 12, 10, 9, it's 17, 13, 12, 9. Sorry, yeah. It's, it's something like that. I can't really remember now off the top of my head. Uh, so, yeah. Just a little run up the scale to get your 12. Then, 17, 12, 13, 12, 9, and then now what you do, this is a really cool thing, he follows the melody line, he goes 10, 12, 13, 15, 13, 12, 10, so you have, uh, I'm not really going to have to go through the rhythm of the notes, if you just listen to the song you should be able to pick it up pretty well. Um, and now it's like a guitar harmony part where again it's just it sounds to me like it's just going up the scale and again starting at that D run starting from D on the fourth string playing up the scale until you get to 12 uh, and then playing from 9 on the third string until you get to 13 just playing up the same scale that I've been talking about goes into another little cool riff. Uh, again, like there's a lot you can do, you know, with just these notes. I'm not saying that's what you should do, I mean it's a really short little bit, but you can like come up with your own your own little mic like, thing to play doing that. Um, and then from there I pretty you know I kind of gave up in figuring out what's going on once I got stuck because uh, I got really annoyed. So, you know, you can just mess around for the rest of the song. Kind of alternate between playing some like really fast parts. And some more slow parts. Um, when you're improvising, it always helps to have like a note to aim for. Is a little bit. So, say I want to end on the D on my root note, I might go. Uh, end on the right note, everything, if you can start and end on the right notes, on notes that are in the scale, everything else will kind of fall into place. It doesn't matter if you, you know, place and above notes. Um, okay, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, it's a really good exercise to just take a solo section. If you can get someone else, if you have a friend who also plays, and you can get them to lay down the rhythm for you. Never mind. If you can get them to play, if you can get them to lay down the rhythm for you, and you can solo over it. That's like the best practice in the world. Um, so yeah, I mean, start off. The, if you want to play the solo, start off the solo.
try to aim it in the way that he does, uh, which what you do is you're bending up on 13, playing 13, 12, 10, and then bending up on 15. And then what you do is you bend up and you want to catch, you're bending up on the first string, all that on the first string, you're bending up and you want to catch the second string so that you can play them together. It's a nice, it's a really cool kind of way to end the song if you have a whammy bar. You can also play around with that. Um, okay, so yeah, that's that's pretty much what I've got. I know it's not it's not like this crazy impressive uh, display of how this was actually done. It's more just, you know, like... I always like to imply so it's one <laughs> you don't have to learn a solo then. And two, it's always, you know, implying it's a real it's a real mark if someone knows the instrument. Um, so yeah, I mean you can take that scale that I've shown you. Work on some of the ideas that I've been talking about. Maybe you can take, you know, some of what Gates does. You can do that. Focus on if you want to sound like him. Focus on some, you know, pay, pay special attention to using some of the notes that he does. So especially those the nines on the on the first and second strings are notes that he would use a lot. Fits in there well. The thirteen on the third string. Those extra notes are all part of the blues scale. Um, oh, of course, I didn't mention this, but obviously you can use it. You might have been talking as well. Put the extra notes in, it becomes a blues scale. Uh, also, if you play 11 on the 4th string, that's your harmonic minor note again. Um, okay, so that's that. I just want to say these videos, like learning solos and songs and stuff, is not part of my my lesson series. So don't think that if you just started playing like a few months ago and you watched the first few videos I did and I'm watching this that you have to be like doing these crazy solos and stuff. This is just a side thing for fun, um, you know, for the people out there who are a bit more experienced. Um, okay, so that's about all I've got to say, I think. Uh, if you liked it, if you had any suggestions, if you thought I played like crap, but I didn't play like crap, whatever you think, let me know. Always happy to hear suggestions. Um, and again, let me know what you guys want to hear. I would really, you know, I'm also doing this, these lessons and stuff and videos for myself because I want to expand, you know, what I'm able to play. So if people are giving me suggestions of songs and bands that I normally don't, wouldn't listen to and I, I have to learn them so I can show you, then I think that's cool because, you know, then it'll expand my knowledge and my repertoire and at the same time, I'm helping you guys out. So let me know what you think. What, I was going to say what you thought, what you think, what you think, what you thought. Let me know if you thought what you think, what you think, what you thought to think in the comments. Uh, cool. And to all my friends out there who subscribe and watch my videos, guys, thank you so much. I owe you a beer or something. Okay, cool. Thanks, guys.